Hi everybody, I'm Sylvia Hepler, owner and president of Launching Lives LLC, which is a career development specialty company based in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, and I target primarily executives and managers in my business. I also want you to understand that at this point in my business, I'm serving people all across the United States, and I'm really proud of that. When I first opened this business in the summer of 2008, I realized that I was going to be serving quite a few people who were looking to get the next job for whatever reason. And certainly the economy played into that back in the middle of 2008, and that continued into 2009 and 2010 and, and certainly beyond. And one of the things that I discovered about a lot of these people is that they didn't know where to start in getting the next job, whether that was a promotion or it was moving to an entirely different field and industry. So some of them didn't know where to start and some of them had an idea of where to start. They had some idea of what kind of a process to use, but they were kind of like haphazard about using the process. They were not faithful to the process and the process was not something that was structured and streamlined. And so they were willy-nilly with it. They were kind of all over the place with it. And then there were other people who had no idea what kind of a process to even use at all. And so after a few years of this, and I started getting really good at leading people into the next position or the next industry, I realized I need to put together a system that kind of encapsulates all of these needs. And what I eventually did was I developed a 12-step system called a blueprint to landing your next job. And I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud to roll that out. And currently I have clients using it and really appreciating the results that they are getting from that. So it's a 12-step system. It's a blueprint. And then I got the idea recently that what I ought to do is I ought to select a few of those steps, not all of them, but a few, and in this case, five, that I could highlight for you as an audience so that you could learn more about the content of this particular blueprint. And that as we explore several of these steps, I can take you to a little bit deeper level within each one of them. So my goal here is to teach, to instruct, to share, to guide, to motivate, to inspire. And I'm really happy to have you along with me for this ride. So the way it's going to work is there's going to be a series of five mini videos. This is the first one here today. And I'm going to roll out each video one a week. So this will cover a span of time of five consecutive weeks. And these will come to you via an email. And you already know that because you've already needed to opt in to get this series of videos. So let's start with the very first step in the blueprint within the system called Blueprint for Landing Your Next Job. The very first step, I think, is you have to know who you are, who you really are at the core. What I mean by that is who you are at the essence, your truth, your purpose for being, your reason for walking this planet. You got to know who that is because you are distinctly different from anybody else walking this earth. You gotta get in touch with who you are at your deepest level. And I can tell you that when you get in touch with who you are at your deepest level, you are more likely to connect with the next job that is perfectly aligned for you, perfectly aligned for who you are now. And this leads me to say that who you are now is a little bit different than who you were last week, last month, six months ago, last year, five years ago, 20 years ago. You are a little bit different human being now than then. 
So you got to get in touch with that. Now let's dig a little bit deeper into the content associated with this particular step in the blueprint. I think you need to clarify all of the things that we're going to run through here. You need to get clear, first of all, about your internal core values. What do you hold most near and dear in this world, in your life? What's most important to you? Family, a certain relationship, your career, money, influence, service, making contributions, creating a product, being top salesperson at your company? Is it independence, autonomy? Is it health and fitness? I mean, we could go on and on with probably 30 or 40 different values. But I want to challenge you in this video to sit down and get clear about your top 10 core intrinsic values, or at least the top five. Get in touch with those, top 10 or at least the top five, and actually write them down. There's a lot of power in the written word. And keep those handy so that you can keep referring to them. Because you know what? If you go out and take a job that is not meshing, that is not aligned with your core values, that's going to be a problem. Because then you're setting yourself up for disappointment, struggle, and eventual failure. Believe me, I know that that's true. And, and how do I know that's true? Let me tell you a quick story about myself. I certainly don't mind putting myself in the limelight. Back in my 20s, I ended up taking a retail sales position. Gosh, I was probably like about 24, 25 years of age. I was still getting to know myself at that point in time. And I took this retail sales job because I needed money. I had college loans to pay off. I was trying to buy a used car. I was trying to pay for a little apartment every month, etc. I took that job because I needed a paycheck. And I thought, naively so back then, that a paycheck was going to make me happy and that it was going to make me feel at least reasonably secure. Well, I'm here to tell you decades later that I was absolutely wrong, totally wrong about that, because all it did was help to pay the bills and barely so at that point in time. And I was not happy, in fact, I was miserable because I took a position that just wasn't Sylvia. The position just wasn't who I was at that point in time. So you need to keep that in mind. You gotta understand your values so that you can align with those as you reach out and embrace the next position. Now along with that, you need to get clear about your priorities in life. Look at where you are right now. You know, priorities shift. They do. They change. They change every so many months or they change every so many years. But the point is they actually shift and change. So what's true for you right now? Is your family a priority? Maybe you have growing kids. If so, your family is probably one of your big priorities. And that's going to dictate at least a little bit about what kind of next job you take. Or maybe your priority is to climb the corporate ladder. Or maybe your priority is, hey, I've done a lot of things in this life. Now it's time for me to open my own business. Whatever your priorities are, you need to know what they are. And just like your values, I invite you to write them down. Again, because there's a lot of strength in the written word. So as you seek your next job, you need to be cognizant. You need to be mindful of your core values and also your top priorities. And I would say the magic number with those is three. What are your top three priorities in this world right now? Also, I would suggest that you get some clarity about your dominant personality. You know, are you extroverted? Are you more introverted? Or are you a combination of both like I am? Are you a perfectionist? Are you a skeptic? Are you a person who's mostly a giver? Or are you more of a taker? Are you creative? Is that what drives you? You know, you need to get clear about who you are personality-wise. And find out from other people how they see your personality. How would they describe your unique personality? 
I'd also urge you to get clear about what are you willing to give up? Because you know, we all have to give up something to get to the next best thing. So what are you willing to give up so that you can get something that you believe right now is better than what you have currently? And maybe that means you have to give up a certain type of security, like a certain amount of money in the paycheck to get to that next piece of what you want to do in your career. Or maybe you have to be willing to give up being close to home and having the comfort of just, you know, driving to the office three or five miles away from where you live. Maybe you have to be willing to give up that kind of security. But whatever it is, you need to get clear about what are you willing to give up so that you can get that over there that's really appealing to you right now. And that leads us to talk about motivations. What motivates you to get up in the morning or whenever you get up, midday, evening, you know, maybe some of you work shift jobs, whenever you get up, what motivates you when that alarm clock goes off? What juices you up, pizzazzes you, jazzes you to hop out of bed and say, yeah, I'm gonna go to it now? Is it a big fat paycheck? Is it a fabulous comprehensive benefit package? Is it all the responsibility and the supposed power that goes with being a manager or a boss? Is it being able to influence a lot of people in bigger and deeper ways? You know, what is it? Is it the opportunity to be creative? Is it the opportunity to be independent or to be the top salesperson? Whatever it is, get in touch. It's not about right and wrong, but you got to get in touch with what motivates you. And we're all different because what motivates me doesn't necessarily motivate you and that's okay. But you at least got to know what does motivate you. Moving on to your needs. Here we're talking about your mental and psychological and emotional and your practical needs in this world. Make a list of those too. You're going to have several lines drawn down the sheet of the paper. You know, what mental needs do I have at this point in my life? What emotional needs do I have? What psychological needs do I have? And what practical, rooted in the real world kind of needs do I have right now? Do I need to cert earn a certain level of income? Do I need to have a certain peacefulness about my day? Do I need to have a certain reduction in my stress level? Do I need to live close to home? Do I really have a need to move to the West Coast or the East Coast or to Texas? You know, what are my needs? Do I need to have a certain kind of supervisor? Do I need to have a certain amount of autonomy? Get in touch with those needs, that's really important. And make a whole list of those. Get clear about them. My next word up here on the board is tolerations. What does that mean? Well, what I mean by that is, what have you been tolerating that you are no longer willing to tolerate? And what are you now willing and eager to tolerate so that you can get something else that means more? So are you willing to tolerate a longer commute or even travel on an airplane or by car? over a period of days so that you can get that ideal job right now? Are you willing to tolerate longer hours? Are you willing to tolerate working for a large company instead of a small one so you can get the position that you want? You know, that's what I mean by tolerations. You got to get clear about what those are as well. And how about truths for you now? What's true for you now that was not true for you six months ago? because your truths shift also. What's true for you now that wasn't true last year, five years ago, 10 years ago? You gotta get connected to those truths. Like maybe you just absolutely have to work for a certain type of company or organization or a certain type of supervisor. Maybe what's true for you now is you are not gonna work for somebody else ever again. You must start your own business. That's kind of where I was, by the way, back in 2007. That was one of my truths. I was not going to work for anybody else anymore in my career. So figure that out. 
How about stress triggers? What actually makes you intensely stressed? And are you able to manage those stressors? For example, maybe you have a chronic health problem. Well, you know, that's going to come into play as you decide on your next position. Is it a health problem that you can manage to the extent that you can do X, Y, or Z job or not? Stress. Do you have time constraints that you're finding difficult living with? Do you have food allergies? Do you currently have colleagues at work who are driving you crazy? Is your workload just over the top and you can't and won't deal with this anymore? Are you not getting enough sleep? You know, these are examples of stressors and gosh, there's probably like 50 different stress triggers. But you need to know what yours are, particularly your top three of those. And then what are you going to do about those as it pertains to landing the next job? Because if you know, for example, that you get highly stressed having to deliver sales quotas every week, well, maybe you don't want your next job being that you have to deliver sales quotas every single week and meet those quotas. It's just too stressful for you. And it's a form of stress you're not interested in. And then finally, what nurtures your spirit? What feeds your soul? I say that to my clients all the time. What actually feeds your soul? And you know, I'm sad to say, so many people are not doing work in this world that feeds their spirit, that feeds their soul, that motivates them to get out of bed and really want to go out and provide a service or create a product or sell a product with enthusiasm in a way that gets other people excited about what they're doing. So currently, are you doing something that is nurturing you? Or are you suddenly realizing, as I put this question out, that you really need to jump ship. You really need to do something different. It's time so that your soul can be fed and money just isn't enough. Position and power and status just aren't enough. You really want to do something else that puts you on a whole different plane. So let me conclude this particular video segment with you by giving you an assignment. I'm going to give you an assignment after every one of these five video sections. And here's your assignment from this one. I would like you to interview a few people you trust to get their observations about who you are. In other words, it's fine for you to be introspective, and I want you to be because I just laid out all the different pieces to how you can be introspective. We just talked about all of those that are written up here on, on the flip chart sheets. But then I want you to take it the next step or go to the next level with this. After you have done all of your introspective work by yourself, then I'd like you to go out to other people. Maybe it's your life partner. Maybe it's somebody at work you totally trust. Maybe a couple of close friends. And maybe, depending on the relationship you have with your current boss, it might even be your boss. But select a few people and talk to them. Just have a conversation with them about how do they see you? What do they know about you? What do they see you putting out in the world? How would they de define you? How would they describe you? And what do they think you would just be perfect at doing the next time around? So that concludes video number one in this series. And I'm really looking forward to having you join us for video number two, where we're going to talk about your personal beliefs and assumptions. Bye-bye for now.